looking live at the Arthur L. Baker Gymnasium as we wind down the calendar year of 2013 with an exciting double header scheduled this weekend starting tonight. Minders at home against the undefeated Clyde Savannah Golden Eagles and of course tomorrow night their Wayne County rival comes in here to take Minders on as well. That would be the Lions Lions. I'm Dave Barnick along with Matt Berkey. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Good crowd anticipating a very good ball game tonight. They had a close matchup to start the season. One by six Matt Berkey and uh, happy holidays to you. Happy holidays to you Dave. And uh, what do you look for to tonight's contest? Obviously Ruddy the big guy for Minders facing the Twin Towers of yeah. Clyde Savannah. Uh, Clyde has the advantage in that they, you know, they got two two big guys and um, Minders counters with Luke Ruddy inside who's a handful. But uh, last game, Clyde kind of took advantage of whoever Luke wasn't guarding. They tried to get that guy, either DeSanto or Bogans, the ball down low. But, uh, you know, Minders really scrapped in that first game and they, they, they actually, they got down pretty big early, around 15, 16 points. And they came back, it was a one, two point game in the fourth quarter and, and Clyde eventually pulled away. Uh, that was the first game of the year for both teams, so you know I expect to see a little bit more crisper play tonight. You know a lot of missed shots in that game. Uh, I think the key for Miners tonight is to get scoring elsewhere outside of Ruddy. Down in Penyan, uh, Miners last game they got 16 points from Johnson and 16 points from Carher. Uh, I think if we see that again tonight, Miners are going to have a shot to win this game. And Carher, of course, with the three trifectas, he lit them up on a few occasions last year. And speaking of last year, because we we're mentioning the tip off this season, some of the players remain from last year. Some have left, of course, through graduation. But uh, Miners and Clyde have some, I don't know if you want to call it animosity, but certainly uh, some competitive rivalries between the two teams because they played a sectional qualifier in which Miners advanced at the expense of Clyde in a very good game, if I recall played at uh, Waterloo. Yeah, you, it's funny because they played the last game of last year and then they played the first game of this year. So they played each other back to back, you know, a year apart. And uh, Clyde brought back most of their players from that team. And uh, obviously Miners lost to Jimmy Rickey and, and Miller and big loss was Brandon Pasolacqua, obviously. So, but I think Miners is improving. Big key for Miners tonight is knocking down three pointers. They're, they usually typically shoot a lot of them. I'd like to see him get the ball into into Ruddy and let him try to go to work in there. And if he can't, if he's getting doubled, then kick it out. And Miners got knocked down threes. In the uh, arch rivalry contest number one between Lions and Clyde at Lions, Clyde appeared to be blowing that game wide open. But wait a second, they had a little foul trouble. Lions clawed back and hung on by just a point. So again, depth foul situations should play a pivotal role. Yeah, I think both ways. Uh, you know, obviously Luke's got to stay out of foul trouble for Minders and uh, the two bigs for really everybody on Clyde. They're not real deep, but uh, their, their starting five is very athletic and uh, they're a fun team to watch play. And uh, also going on tonight, Syracuse uh, in a bit of a bowl game in football. They somehow managed to become bowl eligible and uh, were leading early. 7-0, and uh, their basketball team playing their old rival Villanova tomorrow. We'll be talking about that uh, as well, I'm sure. But uh, good crowd on hand two days after two days after Christmas. Yep. And uh, we'll take a break in the action, and we'll be back with more high school basketball right after this. We hold on to the things that really matter. Welcome to Generations Bank. Hi, I'm Alan Larson. At Seneca Meadows, landfill gas is used as fuel to generate electricity to power between 12,000 and 18,000 homes. And because this fuel is burned at high temperature, it doesn't go into the atmosphere. To learn more, watch our videos at SenecaMeadows.com.
starting lineups being introduced here at the Miners Gymnasium. Uh, fresh, freshly coated paint, uh, given a, a new and uh, fresh, smart look to the gymnasium. We'll be talking about that as, as well. Um, you know these guys, uh, the big guys, Jomaine Bogan and um, Cam DeSano, Matt, as uh, they were guests of yours and Jim's on Upstate Hoops. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Cam's very articulate. Jomaine does a lot of his talking on the court. <laughs> yeah, both uh, very nice kids. I thought they did a great job, you know, coming into the show. And uh, we've had them on last year, so we got to know those two guys pretty well. We see um, different people in attendance scouting out uh, tonight's broadcast. And the one thing uh, that Clyde brought back in addition to uh, Bogan and DeSano was head coach Tim Jackson. While we have a new head coach in Nick Ciotti at Miners, took him a while to get that uh, evasive first victory but they've been playing better of late yeah you know they, they scheduled hard and you know they opened up with Clyde Wayne and Geneva and uh, you know that's three tough schools and they came back with wins against Paul Mack and Penny and so they're on a two-game win streak here Clyde comes in seven and all so uh, it should be a great game tonight as the starting lineups for minders currently be introduced as uh, that'll be Luke Ruddy Brett Anderson is uh, Devin? Devin's not starting. Uh, Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson and Jason, Jason Anderson. Anderson. On the other side of the ledger, it's Jason Doig, Cam DeSano, Michael Turner, Jomaine Bogan, and Jared Faneel. Not to be confused with uh, the captain and Faneel. <laughs> <laughs> but a very good football player off their. Uh, successful football team this year. We're about ready to tee this one up. Clyde Savannah versus Minders. Minders wearing the home white uniforms with their uh, navy blue numerals and lettering. The Golden Eagles in gold with the purple striping and purple numerals. That's actually Joe Fanil starting, who is Gerard's older brother, I think. I think I marked her on the That's table. okay. Both very good athletes. So we'll be able to see a little bit of both. A oh, lot yeah. of both. Yep. And these kids obviously know each other pretty well too. Uh, Matt, the not that far away geographically. And we are underway and Clyde has the opening possession with the tap. Miners is playing 2-3. I look for them to stay in that a lot tonight and make Clyde beat you from the outside. He has swinging it on the perimeter and looking for something inside, but we had an exciting JV contest. And I thought we were perhaps, uh, at least for myself, looking at a, another overtime contest, but Miners prevailed 56-53. Miners JV is doing very good this year. So the big guy, Bogans, misses from outside. Miners with a breakaway, lay it up and in. Cole Fletcher got the breakaway points there. Minders on the board first. Inside feed, Bogan. Pull up, no. Miners looking to run a collision. They let that go. And get a whistle on a Minders foul. And of course, you look right away, who is it on? Because that was on Jason Anderson, I think, got him. Nice contest by Jason. Uh, I think Bogans was going up. Maybe he's going to try to dunk that one. So, Jomaine Bogans at the line, the senior. Dips, pretty good form, but rims out. Clyde's probably going to set up a press if he's able to make this free throw. And he does. So Clyde gets on the board. Just underway, 2-1. Minders facing pressure, breaks it to Ruddy. Takes it in, off the window, no. Nice move, everything but the conversion. Yeah, nice job by Minders there breaking that press. Just got to finish that one. 
Ruddy had a fine junior campaign. Bogan misses, gets his own rebound, misses again. He's off to a slow start, and here comes the academy. Let up. No. Rebound. Blocked out of bounds by Clyde. Miners wants to run, but Clyde can fly. Yeah. Clyde likes to get up and down, too. Miners, you know, unless they have a breakaway, they're probably going to look to slow it down a little bit, but... Clyde not getting back though early here. Miners having a couple breakouts, had a couple nice looks early. Maybe uh, both teams a little keyed up, no doubt, to start the contest. Yeah, Clyde missed a couple easy shots. Jermaine missed a uh, little gimme down there on the layup. So cool hand, Luke Ruddy with a basketball out front. Well, we'll see how Brian Johnson does on the court. I'll tell you one thing, Matt, that kid can hit a golf ball. Yeah, that's, that's what I hear. <laughs> He's had uh, great coaching by, by his dad, of course. Yeah, I know they're both very good golfers. And he's coming along. He had a nice game the other night. You know, he didn't play last year, so I think he's kind of finding his way here and uh, starting to knock down some shots. Ruddy, wheels, and contact, no whistle. Wide comes away with it. Bogan, all the way in. He's about 0 for 5 so far from the field. Still, the score remains at 2-1. Jeremy Hunt on the camera as a three-pointer does not get the roll. Clyde really looking to push it. They just can't convert a basket. Outside, stop and pop. The bomb's no good, and there's DeSano. I think that's the first time I've said his name with the offensive rebound. Bogan and this time, yes. And it counts. Great way to attack the zone. Get, get the ball into the foul line. And uh, Cam Bissano did a nice job finding his running mate, Jermaine Bogan, down low. As we see it on uh, Jeremy's nope. fine replay. I think that's two on Anderson as well. Oh, they got him. Brian Johnson. Oh, they called on Johnson. I thought they got Anderson. And Bogan gets the roll. So Clyde now with their first lead. Two minutes and some change gone here in quarter number one. Pressure by Tim Jackson's. Yeah, Clyde, Clyde kind of, they, they don't trap a lot out of this, but they, they like to uh, pick up full court. Johnson with the ball in the far corner, batted away and taken away. Ill-advised pass with lots of traffic inside. And did all the other way. Carriner, a collision goes down. We got bodies laying all over the place. I think they got Miters Cole Fletcher on the reach in there. Neither team has settled into any kind of uh, tempo yet. No. Hyde's going to need somebody to knock down a couple perimeter shots, I think, eventually here to loosen up that zone a little bit. If I'm Miners, I just pack it in, make them shoot from the outside, which they've done a pretty good job of so far. So Clyde and Minders, defending sectional champions. DeSano, strong move, left side, no, his rebound, no, and saves, and then DeSano with a little hip check, and his personal. That's the first uh, personal call against a Clyde player this evening. Really unfortunate there, misses two layups, then he commits the foul, so kind of worst case scenario there, but uh, I'm sure Cam will knock those down as this game goes on. So Kevin Korzineski joins Harold Weber tomorrow night. Same location. Minders one of the opponents. They'll be entertaining Lions. Probably most of these Clyde guys will be here watching. Ruddy inside, one dribble, no. Could have been at the foul line. Instead, Clyde comes back the other way. And here's a steal to the lane. Too hard. Layup. Too hard. Ruddy saves. And nobody can buy one here wow. early, Dave. And they're Look all at ugly. Uh -oh. Steal the other way. Layup. Yes. And Joe the timeout. Finale. And I think both teams can use the timeout. Fanil with the bucket. And we'd like to tell you that uh, the things that you value in a bank are the deeply rooted values they've held for more than 150 years. 
Learn more at mygenbank.com and check out their new mobile banking app. Search for Generations Bank in the Android or Apple Store, one of our fine sponsors here on Finger Lakes One. So, 6-2. Uh, Minders scored their only points to, to uh, start the scoring in the contest. And it has been uh, wild and woolly and pretty <laughs> ragged. Yeah, I think Clyde's size is uh, affecting some of Minder's shots down in the paint. But uh, both teams just really missing shots. You know, I think eventually they're gonna start making these layups. But they're, you know, both teams are getting pretty good looks. And the pressure will continue for full court. And they get it up, breaking it nicely and knocked out of bounds. It'll still be Minder's ball. The crowd even hasn't got into it yet because it's been so ragged. A lot, a lot of misses, yeah. Not a whole lot to cheer about yet for either team. But I think Minders, if they attack that press correctly, they can uh, they can score some baskets. Kara Hurd finds Ruddy. Thought about the 17-footer right in front of the broadcast location. And then DeSano, that's a bad foul. Yeah. For a big guy particularly, 30 feet away from the bucket. Yeah, and that's his second one, so he's going to have to go to the bench here for a little bit. That's a big, you know, it's big play in the game right there. You know, Cam's play, defending player of the year in Wayne County, so that's a big loss for him. Goes to the bench with 350 to go in the first quarter. He'll probably come back here to start the second quarter. So that's um, chess move number one here. We mark that moment down. Miners trying to end the drought inside. Intimidated by Turner's height. The layup is missed. Stop and pop the other way. No. They brought would, in Jared Finio to you, uh, replace DeSano. Would you say this frenetic pace is more of to the liking of Clyde at this point? I, I think so. I think Clyde really wants to get up and down, use their athleticism. Uh, you know, they got a lot of guys who can finish. But uh, so far, it's not favoring anybody, really. And, you know, Miners is hanging around with them. And, and a missed shot, Ruddy's rebound. Anderson with the ball, he had some good moments last year. Clyde playing like a, looks like a, what's a one, two, two. Carraher's three pointer won't go, he had three of them in his last game. And what do we got? Travel, travel on Bogans, I guess he caught the ball up on his hip. I don't know if I've seen that move too many times for the official. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Clyde's in a 1-2-2 two, two with, you know, they got Bogan up top, which are, they're kind of small in the back here, but they got a lot of good athletes. I think he wants his bigger guys out guarding the three-point line. Anderson takes it, the floater in the lane. No, the tip up, yes! Ruddy gets in the scoring column at the two and a half minute mark. Nice tip by Luke there. Coach Nick Ciotti on the uh, far bench. Open if he wants it. He thought about it too much and took the extra step. That's Jason Doig. He doesn't like to shoot a lot. He, you know, he runs the show as, as their point guard. Uh, he's a very heady kid. Uh, usually makes great decisions, but he doesn't like to shoot a lot. And, uh, he should have just caught and shot that he's wide open 15 footer. I'll talk about Jason Doig's number in a moment as uh, Brett Anderson in the contest for the Academy. In the corner, thinks about it. Jump shot, no, Ruddy, yes. And again, he hadn't scored when both Twin Towers were in there, he's got two buckets in a row. Yeah, and they got, and Clyde's big guys are out in the zone, so really, they're really small in the back now, and Luke's taking advantage twice. Uh, Coach Jackson might have to switch that defense around a little bit to get the uh, big, you know, get Bogans back down low, or Turner. Turner's a great rebounder, but he's also out in the wing, so they don't really have anybody to rebound down there. Jared Fennell bangs our first trifecta of the night, and Clyde back in front by three, nine, six. And they did put, they did switch up the zone a little bit and put Bogans down below. Shot is maybe, I think, partially blocked. The miss by Anderson, and here comes Clyde. Bogans from deep. 
Big shots there, back-to-back -back threes for Clyde. That's gonna make, my, you know, my, mine is gonna have to come out a little bit. I got Bogans with six points thus far, leading score in the game, under a minute first quarter. Anderson drives the runner, no, but a foul. Well, when I see number two, which is worn by Jason Doig, I have to now think of Jason Doig, but I of course think of the captain, Derek Jeter, who wears number two, and the nice uh, autographed Louisville slugger my son got me with oh, Jeter's yeah. uh, insignia. But it reminds me also, as at the foul line, Anderson hits the first free throw, of when I think of the number five, I think of Paul Horning of Green Bay and Matt Moose Berkey. And I'm missing that banner here in the Arthur L. Baker Gymnasium. They took down when they went to uh, repaint it. So let's bring back the banner. <laughs> yeah, they got they got the banners up. We're just missing the uh, the two retired numbers that, that they had up there. And not exactly sure what's going on with that, but I'm sure they'll take care of it eventually. And of course, your teammate, the late Mark Scalzo, and it makes yep. me sad every time I think about uh, no doubt. the young loss of life there. Uh, uh, knew his dad fairly well, know yeah. his dad fairly well, and uh, a great uh, part of that championship, state championship team. Yeah, Mark had a great run there throughout sectionals in the states. You know, he's definitely a key component. When he and Marco came off the bench, I can't say you guys lost anything no, at all. No, it's not, it was a nice, nice having them coming off the bench. Carriher can't get it to go, and I think they got Ruddy with a push off the other way. I think that was Verky on the miss there. I never used to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Devin's a, uh, he's a great shooter, and he, he'll, he'll get it up there. He, he, uh, he's got a really nice release. He's going to be a good player for the next four years for Minders. Of course, if I did say it, uh, your father would come and give me a blast. <laughs> so, 12-8 to score. Under 10 seconds, first quarter. Bogans, corner, three-pointer. No. And late whistle. Yeah, uh, Michael Turner on the on the push coming over the back. He was uh, Turner was going into overdrive there. <laughs> that uh, the Bogan's three went in and out from the corner there. That would have been a big for Clyde to open that up a little bit more. Minders at half court, nice effort, but it'll fall short. Minders trailing 12-8 after one. Back with second quarter basketball action after this. We hold on to the things that really matter. Welcome to Generations Bank. Hi, I'm Jody Torrio. If you're like me, you've got stuff lying around the house that you want to recycle, but you're just not sure how, like broken toasters, vacuum cleaners, or microwaves. At Seneca Meadows, we have a drop-off for those. Bring in anything with a cord, and we'll make sure it's recycled properly through our partnership with 2TRG. It's that easy. Low-scoring first quarter, lots of turnovers both ways, lots of uh, errant shots, but yeah. uh, Clyde has the early lead. Yeah, neither team really uh, got into the groove there offensively, and I, you know, I think some of that has to do with the defensive being played tonight, but also they just missed some pretty easy shots tonight. Clyde's back in the 1-2-2, uh, two, two, and they did come back with Cam DeSano, so hopefully they can control the board a little bit better. Miners really struggling in the half court. They got, you know, they got the breakaway layup and two putbacks, and you know that's about it, and a couple free throws. Clyde is long and lanky and athletic. Yes, they are, and uh, take a lot of room up with that zone and that ruddy, nice tip up to keep the ball alive. Gets it to his teammate, and the reset. But a tough pass inside. Really, ruddy had no chance, and. Clyde pounding the boards in the bucket, I believe, by Michael Turner. 
Yeah, Clyde really likes to get out there and just get going, get the ball up there, and then they go get it. They, they attack the offensive glass really well. Now, Brett Anderson, number 10, is the only one of the five out there for Minders who doesn't go to the same barber. <laughs> Shot from the corner, bang! Devin Verkey, and that's a three that the Blue Devils need to kind of stay in there with Clyde Savannah. Nice pass, Bogan to his teammate DeSano for DeSano's first points of the night. Nice land. Yeah, those two uh, really work well together. They've been together for three or four years now. Uh-oh. Look out! And he, I think Bogan saw the uh, onrushing defender, so he laid it in nonetheless. 18-11, quick timeout. We'll tell you that the United States Navy is one of our fine sponsors as we see this replay by Jeremy. If you've been waiting for something more in your life, America's Navy may have what you need, like opportunity for hands-on training in any of more than 60 high-growth fields, help with paying for a college degree, opportunities to travel worldwide while helping to change it, work with cutting-edge cutting edge technology, no experience needed to start. If you want to be part of something bigger than yourself, America's Navy can help launch your future today. America's Navy, a global force for good. Contact them today at 412-395-4680. Good time out by Nick Ciotti there. Yeah, man. you don't want to let Clyde get on a run here. They're capable, you know, putting up 10, 15 points in a row. So settle everybody down and uh, run some offense here. Clyde sticking with that 1-2-2 two, two zone still. And it's been very effective. It, yes, yes indeed. A lot of times, uh, Minders, when they appear to have a quick open look, as we have yet another Minders turnover, here comes Clyde. Dish off, open shot corner, rims the hole, and knocked out of bounds to Minders. That was Joe Fennell to his brother, and uh, he had a real nice look at a three, just couldn't get it to go down. There's Nick Ciotti. Pretty composed, actually, watching the action, but doing a pretty good uh, workout on that denty. <laughs> yeah, Nick doesn't, you know, I watched him on the sideline. He, he doesn't get too up or too down about everything, so does a good job with his composure. Driving, land. Johnson had a lane. It was tipped away, blocked. And we're not keeping track of the block shots, but they're up there already for yeah. Clyde especially. Yeah, they got they got the two big guys, and then they got a couple other guys who can really jump. Nice inbounds off the window, won't go, and clearing the iron is Michael Turner. He does a nice job in there for Clyde. He doesn't score a lot, but he can really rebound the ball. One of those un unsung hero types. Yep. You know, he allows uh, Clyde to let Jermaine and Cam kind of float around a little bit more. Left-handed three by er, by Doig won't go. Miner's ruddy. And look out, offensive foul. That's two on the big guy for the Blue Devils. That's you know, another big play there, Dave. Uh, I, and I, I think the refs got that call right. It looked like uh, the Clyde player had his feet, both feet planted. He just did a good job of taking the charge. There's a replay of it. And, yep, yep. good call. And so far, Ruddy, uh, no movement on the Minders bench. Clyde has uh, established in uh, just over three minutes through the second quarter. Greater quickness, greater size. Yeah, and you know, that's apparent. And uh, you know, I don't know in a game like this if Miners can afford to send Ruddy to the bench right now. Uh, he's just gonna have to play smart. He got into foul trouble in the Palmac game. He did a decent job of, uh, you know, playing with foul trouble. And he's gonna have to learn here to, uh, you know, if they got a layup, just let it go. He can't afford a foul guy. Not a lot of tall timber helping him inside as the three-pointer is good by Clyde. That's Joe Fennell with his second three-pointer, and he's really improved his shot this year. Last year, he uh, had a little trouble shooting from the outside. This year, he's really knocking it down. Good ball movement, but you can see how high Minders uh, players are arcing their shots, and a 
Great hustle effort by Miners by Johnson, but it'll go over to Clyde. Yeah, Doig and Johnson with a nice hustle play there, and Doig was able to knock it off Johnson's leg. 21-11, double-digit lead for Clyde. Miners needs to dig in here and get a stop. Turner, nobody draws the foul. Uh, and that one goes, I think, against Brian Johnson. That would be his second. Yeah, that was kind of a bailout, I thought. Uh, Turner was a little bit out of control there. But uh, if I remember from, from the first game, Turner's uh, not a very good free throw shooter here. So we'll see how he does. Look good on that one. Yeah. Not only the result, but the form yep. as well. Dave Pernick, along with Matt Verkey, of course, Jeremy Hunt, your cameraman, Jim Sinekropi. He's the guy that makes everything work. As that one was a Phil oh. Necro knuckler, but a poor job of blocking out. Allows Fanil to come in with an easy lay-in off the missed free throw. He came from the three-point line. He's still got to mark those guys because he got in there last time and the ball rolled in. And Minders wants, needs, and calls the timeout. We'll keep it right here. We'll tell you that Jimmer's Auto in Sonica Falls, a full inventory of late model cars, trucks, and minivans. Everyone gets financed, buy here, pay here. All that is required is a low down payment to get your new vehicle from Jimmer's Auto. Check out the inventory online at jimmersauto.com. Did you get that new uh, BMW you were considering? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I'm gonna yeah. give it a little, little more course. time. <laughs> yeah. Miners really needs to figure out a way to score here. Uh, you know they got 11 points halfway through the second quarter, and uh, they really haven't done anything in the half court offense. Uh, they got a couple breakaways and they, they got a couple putbacks, but uh, they got to do a better job of finding some open shots. And uh, you know they found Devin Verky hit a nice corner three. They need to do a little bit more of that. They're going into Luke, and uh, they're really scrambling. Luke's getting the ball. They're doubling him. He's kicking out, and Clyde's doing a really nice job of getting back on the shooters. Just saw a couple former uh, Academy players taking in the action. There's uh, Principal Tony Farrar. Yeah, 11 points, uh, stifling defense. It's kind of been the story all year for Miners. You know, they've been struggling to get up to the you know, 60, 65 points a game. And uh, you're going to have to score a little bit more than that to win most games here. Well, one of the things maybe we'll touch on at halftime uh -oh. is another steal, and Bogan's layup is good. Miners uh, desperately needs a couple of stops and a couple of hoops. Well, I was going to say the disparity in some of the scores seems more pronounced than ever. Nice move, but it won't go. And Clyde comes to answer. Yeah, I, I think in, uh, especially in the Wayne County League and in the, uh, in the Finger Lakes West, there's been a lot of disparity in scores. I think you got a, some pretty good teams, and you got some teams that have been really down this year, so you've seen a lot of. Carraher's shot is blocked. Or that was Murphy, excuse me. Okay. Nice take by Devin, you know, and uh, that's Turner coming over with the block. Tur Turner's uh, a great athlete, and uh, I like the move by Devin, though, going hard to the hole. Yeah, I think that's a good assessment, Matt. Try to, it's, try to make something happen. Quick three-pointer, air ball, wow. rebound saved, and then thrown out, but it was not touched by Cam DeSanto, according to the official right in front of us here. And I couldn't tell if he hit that. that or not. Yeah. Did he hit it? I don't know. <laughs> Jeremy Hunt could tell, <laughs> but, uh, but that yeah. score is looking uh, pretty woeful right now for the Blue Devils. Yeah, Miners only has, I think, three points this quarter. It was 12 to eight at the uh, end of the first quarter, and it's now up to 26-11. Outside jumper, bang, to Santo. That's, you know, Cam can do that. You know, that's a nice 18-foot jumper for him. He looks smooth on that. Inside Ruddy, but he's quickly double teamed. They move it to the weak side, and Devin and Cam just picked up his third, and he's upset with himself. Yeah, that's three on Cam, so he's probably gonna go to the bench for the end of the quarter here. 
The good news, maybe that's not. the bad news. You would think he would be coming out. But the good news, of course, from a Clyde perspective, they have a 17-point lead. Yeah. yeah. Nice league, and they're going to come in with Falker, who's a, uh, he's another guy who does a lot of uh, dirty work down low. He plays very physical. Another good football player. They're asking a lot from the big guy who's uh, currently outside of three-point. He gets that back. Much better defense by this Wayne County addition from some of the teams I've seen in past years. Ruddy inside, blocked from behind, but Bogan. Did they call the really. offensive? Yeah. Tough, tough call. I thought they got Bogan at first. The block itself was clean, but maybe with a little body just from uh, the sweet timing of the whistle. And we'll see it again right here. Yeah, I mean, I thought the, the block up top was clean and he, he came down on him. You got to credit Kinda. Tim Jackson with some pretty good coaching to oh, yeah. have his kids. Uh, no, they ready. I think Clyde's improved tremendously from the first game we saw him. They need the uh, little, you know, the Clyde kid was standing pretty much right under the basket. They kind of need that, like they have in college in the pros where you can't take a charge too close to the basket. And we talked about that foul situation in the pregame playing a critical role tonight. Rebound, Turner is good. Matches his game right there. Great jumper, gets up on the boards pretty good. 30 to 11. The three-pointer back iron, no. Clyde wanted to run, but Turner held it up. And here's a steal the other way. Berkey, nice pass. You gotta follow that shot. That was coffee on the miss. He came in for Ruddy. He's a he's a banger. He throws his body around pretty good. Doesn't have great size for down low, but he definitely hustles. Through 17 minutes, excuse me, 15 minutes of this first half, with less than a minute to play in the half, only 11 points by the Blue Devils. Doing shot, no. Rebound Turner. Set up, solid Miners, game. Yeah, Miners can't get a rebound without Ruddy in there. Nobody's boxing out for Miners here, and the, the guards got to crash in there and help out a little bit too with the rebound, and they can't stand around and watch. And um, Clyde's going to milk this clock. About a, yeah, about a 10 second disparity between the shot clock and the game clock here, so they're going to milk it down here. Probably get the ball to uh, at some point. I'm sure Bogans will probably touch it here. Inside Turner, he may have dribbled on the uh, baseline. 15 seconds left in the half. I couldn't tell you last time Miners was held to 11 yeah. and a half. At halftime, we'll be talking about what else? High school, college, pros. And here's a near steal, and then Bogans is fouled. Last thing you wanted, that'll... And that'll send him to the line for the one and one. Pretty yeah. quick with that first step too. Yeah, he, he's you know for a big guy he can really uh, he played running back on the football team at you know six foot four, and uh, yeah that that was a uh, you know last thing Miners wanted there. They at least hold the ball for the last shot so they they can't you know increase this lead from what it already is. Shot is missed. Someone moved in too quickly. It was Clyde. I think they had a lane violation there. Yep. Yeah. Do you remember? Uh, you remember Terry Brown by oh, any yeah. chance? Yep. And uh, he was a bit older than you, as yep. I recall. Shot is blocked, and that kind of epitomizes the first half of play. It's all Clyde Savannah. 30 to 11 over Minders. Minders will need to scratch and claw their way back into this as we see that block to end the first half. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back with lots of high school sports and other activities to talk about. I think I'll live. We hold on to the things that really matter. Welcome to Generations Bank.
Hi, I'm Alan Larson. At Seneca Meadows, landfill gas is used as fuel to generate electricity to power between 12,000 and 18,000 homes. And because this fuel is burned at high temperature, it doesn't go into the atmosphere. To learn more, watch our videos at SenecaMeadows.com. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, hope you had a great uh, Christmas and uh, the new year is both healthy and prosperous. Of course, right here, prospering thus far are the visiting Clyde's Van Golden Eagles. We anticipated, I did anyway, a very good matchup tonight, figuring the undefeated Golden Eagles uh, would be favored. But here at home, uh, getting a first couple of wins and, and a close game in Clyde, although as you had noted earlier, Maybe not quite as close as the final score indicated, but uh, it's been all of the Clyde's Van Golden Eagles. Oh, Once yeah. they found their their footing, more or less, they've yeah. been uh, you know, coming in, I, away I had, with it. I had uh, high hopes for Miners, which you know I always do. I tend to favor them a little bit, obviously. But Clyde looks great. You know, I, I think what we saw them in Clyde, they, they had they had also missed a week of practice because of going to winning sectionals in football. So when Coach Jackson talked about that, but. Uh, he, he's really got these guys playing well, uh, you know, defensively. They're really using their athleticism and uh, really just making making life miserable for Miners. Um, you know, and Miners, some of that's Miners' fault. I think that, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're, when, they're getting in, when they're getting decent looks, they're kind of rushing it. But, you know, that can be attributed. They're worried about getting their shots blocked. Um, you know, they really haven't done anything offensively up to this point besides a couple putbacks and, a, you know, breakaway layup there. And, uh, you know, we're, Miners is really lucky to be down 20 right now, 19. Uh, and that, you know, Clyde missed a lot of easy ones early. And 
you know, last year, uh, Luke's running mate, Luke Ruddy, his name escapes me at this moment. He graduated the other big guy. Uh, Connor Miller. Now, Connor didn't score a lot, uh, but he took, he was a space eater yep. that took a lot of pressure off Luke by yeah. the rebounding and dirty work that he would, and I mean that in a good way, sure. inside. And uh, as you said, uh, particularly when Luke got the second and then third foul, nobody to uh, bail minders out or to help Luke when he's in there. Yeah, you know, it was nice. You know, Connor is six foot five. Uh, he really had a nice uh, senior year last year, and he, he, you know, really was a key component for minders. And obviously, you know, the, the thing I've talked about all year long is uh, missing Brandon Pasolacqua. Um, you know, a four-year point guard. He really, when things got bad, he could settle it down. You know, Brandon wasn't a great shooter, but he's a very smart player. He could, you know, he'd back his way in there, get a shot, or create a shot for somebody else. Minders is just really missing that guy who can score on his own or really, you know, set somebody could up. penetrate and, under control yeah. and dish off. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're just not knocking down shots right now. So, they're uh, really, uh, you have to kind of forget about the scoreboard and try to take it, uh, play hard, and uh, one basket, one possession at a time. But their work is cut out for them uh, here tonight. And it uh, doesn't get a whole lot easier tomorrow night, if easier at all, nope. against Zach Young's fine coach Lions team. Yeah, and uh, kind of two different teams. You know, Clyde comes in with all this height and a lot of athleticism. Tomorrow night, you'll see a lot of athleticism from Lions, but they're not real big, but they're, they're super quick. You know, they rely on uh, Hunter a lot as their point guard. They rely on him to do a lot of stuff. They got DJ Long back from, you know, a sectional championship last year. And, uh, you know, Lions is out for revenge, too, because Minders beat both Clyde and Lions last year in sectionals. So I'm sure uh, Coach Young's going to have his team fired up for that game tomorrow night. And now Minders are going to have to bounce back from what, what appears to be a blowout loss tonight. They got to bounce back tomorrow night and take on Lions. Yeah, after, uh, after tomorrow night, Let's see. Looking at the schedule. Flight Savannah tonight. Uh, then Minders, after the Lions game, goes into the new year on January 3rd, taking on Newark. So they may get their fill of Wayne County and Wayne County teams rather quickly. Miners got to play Newark coming up next. January 3rd, uh, as I looked that up earlier today. Uh, leading scorers in the game, boy, pretty easy to give you the scoring on the Minder side. Luke Ruddy, two field goals, four points. Devin Verkey, a tray with three. Uh, Cole Fletcher has a bucket, two points. Anderson, two free throws and two, and that's it. 11 points. When I remember you saying about uh, with two minutes to go in the second quarter, they'd only scored three points in the second quarter. Well, they didn't score those final two minutes either. And for uh, Clyde Savannah, Bogan leading the way unofficially with uh, my less than stellar stats sometimes. Six, eight, nine points. And uh, Turner with six, Fenil with eight. Cam DeSano with four, he also with three fouls, and Jared Fennell with a trifecta and three. 30 on the board for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, it's kind of disheartening when you, you you hold a Clyde team to 30 points and you're down 20, you know, 19 points. Um, you know, I, I think Minders is, they gotta find some way to score points, obviously, and Clyde's a tough team to do that against. And, you know, you, do, you really don't want to get into a running game, but it's almost, you almost have to now at this point, you know, try to put some points on the board pretty quickly. And, you know, you got Luke Ruddy with three fouls. So, you know, hopefully uh, Miners come, come out here and, uh, you know, make a quick run and get, get this back to get it back respectable so we can have a good game. Well, Clyde uh, is, uh, has had their share of talent over the years, including a tremendous state championship team. And uh, this team, in terms of demonstrating discipline, is reminding me of that in some ways. Yeah, I, I've been impressed with them all night long. Um, you know, they, they seem to have made great strides since we saw them early in the season. But, uh, you know, they're a team, you know, they got, they got a, all the uh, ingredients to, to make a nice run in uh, not only in sectionals, but maybe get into the state qualifiers and, uh, you know, represent Section 5 going down to Glens Falls, hopefully. 
So, uh, was everybody happy uh, around the Christmas tree oh, yeah. uh, Wednesday morning? Or the, yeah, my two girls uh, made out pretty good. They must have been pretty good girls, I guess, this year. So uh, Santa came through. Oh yeah. Santa, does he uh, usually pay those bounces off as they <laughs> arrive, or does sometimes take a few months? Yeah, yeah this year it might take a few months. <laughs> All right, underway uh, here for the second half. Clyde has the basketball and the 19-point lead. Looks to be the same starting five. Turner's been impressive. Actually, just about everyone for Clyde. The shot by Bogans. Nice little baseline jumper, but it won't go. And if that tenacity continues, Minders uh, is in for a long second half as well. And you have Bogans playing out front defensively. Yeah, they, they do that one, two, two. And we played a lot of that in high school when I was playing. And they, they put the big guy uh, up top to make those cross court passes that much harder. And, uh, you know, he does a great job of uh, the Sandals going to be called for steps. Yep. And that last possession, I think, kind of indicative of some things for Minders when they would penetrate either their shots just off a little bit for maybe um, hurrying them a little bit, as you said. Yeah. Beautiful of the blocks. Yeah, and Clyde has a nice luxury because, you know, they got Bogans up top and you still got Turner and DeSanto down low to grab the rebounds. Ruddy with three fouls gets the ball in the lane. Dish out, Carrer, open three, bullseye! Yeah, nice movement there by Miners, got the open three and Liam knocked it down. His first points of the contest by Mike, Mike Count. And Tim Jackson's gonna look at, that's a look you don't wanna be on the opposite side of on that defensive. Uh, yeah, occasion. he wasn't happy, you know, even the score being uh, up 16 here and that uh, they let up an open three. Well, Red's Place uh, has great lunches served daily in downtown Seneca Falls. Come on down and watch the big game on one of any of their 10 flat screen TVs at Red's Place or visit them online at Men's Hall of Fame dot com. And want to uh, take the opportunity to get the gang uh, together there yeah. one of these days. We'll have to Four nights. Up. Either one. Tip a few Diet Cokes. Sounds good to me. Good chicken wings at Reds. And the tacos, too. Is that the yep, other? Uh, yep. good idea? Here's Ruddy on the break and blocked by Bogans. Nice and, and then kept it in bounds. Good job by Bogans not to get caught up in his block and have presence of mind as a driving shot to the hole by DeSanto is good. But that was uh, maybe the most impressive play of the night and it came on the defensive side. Yeah, Jermaine, uh, here, here it is live in the replay. Nice block, stayed with it and saved it. The bomb, Carroll, he's got it. He found a spot over there. They need a few more. Yeah, he's, they've, he's keeping a minute right now, you know, still hanging around down 15. Shot from Clyde won't go, and the rebound out deep to DeSanto. Has it stolen, gets it back. Turner drives, nice dish off the Neal. Well, in two minutes of time, Kerher doubled the entire team output of the, third of the second quarter with those uh, two trifectas. Yeah, nice to, you know, hopefully get something, hopefully that's gonna be contagious for Minders so they can, you know, knock, get some other guys knocking down some shots as well. And he's really been wide open on both those shots, which Minders didn't have it really too many good looks like that all at all in the first half. Uh, Clyde maybe losing a little intensity on the defensive end coming out here with a big lead. And shooters do tend to be streaky if they get going. A nice drive to the lane. I think that was Johnson yeah. with a floater. Use his left hand there, nice shot. Shot is no good, but comes out deep. You really see Clyde using that quickness. They get into all the loose balls. Down 15. Trying to snuff out Clyde's offense here, which nice, beautiful nice play. speed inside. Turner with the bucket. Didn't catch who made that pass, but it was a beauty. It was DeSanto. 
another great, they've got that a couple times tonight, a little high-low game. That three ball by Johnson won't go. And Clyde, down court quickly. Yeah, this, both DeSanto and Bogans can play away from the bucket, which makes things pretty tough for uh, the opposing teams to defense. Yeah, they got a, you know, we talked about it earlier, they got a lot, a lot of nice pieces. Finds the trailer. He knew DeSanto would be there. He was in no man's he land, was. Matt. And a nice job by Cam to make himself available. It's Bogans, you know, really wouldn't have anywhere to go with the ball, but Cam, you know, they knew he was going to be cutting down the middle of that lane. Kerr, can he make three in a row? No, rims out. He had time, but it did close a little more quickly that time. And we got bodies on the floor. There's an assault going on in Seneca Falls. Nice. Not really. No, nope, there's the play in that. Yeah, nice play there by, this, by uh, Bogans hitting DeSanto. And Kerr, you know, he almost had three in a row there. That one was, was down and popped back out on him. Well, for them to get in this game realistically, they can't afford too many rim outs. They're just that far back. Ruddy, and I think they got to Sano with a block. I think they're going to get Fanil on this. Yeah. I can't help but think Captain and Tennille every <laughs> time I hear his name. Most people don't even know who that is listening. I, I don't know, know that. Who it is. You do so. Captain and Tennille? You didn't know that. Okay. No. Ask your mom then. All right. All right. Ruddy has it stripped. He's a little frustrated right now. One of the top players in the Finger Lakes East. And now uh, some animation and frustration by a couple of the Minders players thinking that should have been their basketball. They got to just hang in and dig in. Minders still sticking in that 2-3 zone now. Especially with Luke with three, it's hard to go man. Good point, Matt. DeSanto looks, pulls up jumper, bang! And that's a couple times he's been able to do that tonight. They kind of lay off him and he uh, takes a step back and knocks down the 18 footer. Five field goals, 10 for DeSanto. Driving in the lane, nice move, won't go. Here comes Clyde the other way. Poised. Yeah, Clyde, they've done a nice job tonight. Running offense, I've uh, been very impressed with them. They set up the offense with uh, Jason Doig out front, who wants it back. Left side to Sano, goes reverse and lays it in. The Sano now on fire as Nick Ciotti calls the timeout. 42-19, Clyde Savannah. We'll keep it right here and let you know that Section 5 talks back for an online discussion of tonight's game and all the teams of Section 5. Visit Section 5, Section V, dot talksback.com. Well, Matt, uh, uh, last weekend of the regular season of the National Football League. Yeah, a lot, a lot on the line still. Unfortunately, we're both Bills fans. The Bills... So. Uh, they don't have anything Snuffed on the line. out the Dolphins <laughs> last year. That was nice, yeah. That was big, because if Miami be... won, they would have been in the playoffs, I'm pretty sure, so. Yeah, they only had 100 yards of offense and were sacked seven times. I wouldn't mind them getting in, actually, with all yeah. the controversy they faced this year. Unfortunately, Ryan Tannehill was my starting quarterback for the Fantasy League, so he didn't really help me out too much. Three yes. points. My fantasy season has ended, <laughs> but I did pick up Nick Foles, which was a great right. addition. And Miners back to action, down 23. This is Verkey, lost the handle, gets it back, lays it up and in. Way to stay with it. Yeah, he got a little lucky there, but we'll take it. At this point, we'll take any points we can get. Dangerous cross-court pass, and that does result in a turnover. Berkey to the hole, doesn't get the land. Ruddy fouls, but it won't go. And, well, I think we're at a, uh, Clyde called the timeout in an attempt, and an apparent successful one, to avoid the turnover. 
And of course, Syracuse, uh, Matthew, is uh, two minutes remain in this, 2.05 in this third quarter, taking on Villanova tomorrow, which they thought Villanova would be decent, but they uh, yeah. right now are a top 10 team. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of surprising this year, the year Villanova's having, but they, they bring back a lot of nice pieces. And, uh, you know, Jay Wright and Villanova's kind of had uh, Jim Beheim and the Syracuse Orange's number over the last five, six years. So I'm sure Syracuse will be pumped. Should be a great crowd in the Dome tomorrow night, or tomorrow afternoon, 2 o'clock game. And, uh, you know, and Syracuse has been somewhat surprising too, I think. You know, I, I figured they're going to be pretty good, but they've, uh, you know, Co Cooney's really coming on, having a nice year. Ennis has been, you know, what more can he ask for from a freshman point guard? Uh, you know, Jeremy Grant's coming along, playing well. So, uh, you know, Sir, after losing what Syracuse lost last year, to, to be having the year they're having right now and just replacing uh, Michael Carter-Williams, Brandon Trish, James Sutherland, uh, you know, they just don't skip a beat. I've always uh, liked the play of their standout, the preseason uh, ACC Player of the Year, who uh, uh, named for some reason escapes me all of a sudden. C.J. Fair. C.J. Fair, and I was delighted he came back. And he doesn't get in the way of good play by his teammates. No, he's uh, he's hit some big shots for him this year. He's you know definitely their go-to guy at the end. The San all his shot altered by Ruddy, but he stays with it for the tip-in. The San all has caught fire. He has 14 after uh, not scoring for about the first half of the first quarter. 44-21 and yet another steal. It's unraveling here at the Arthur L. Baker Gymnasium. Bogan, no, and a minder's foul will send Jermaine, Joe Main, to the line. There's a nice tip in by DeSanto, played before, and uh, you know, Clyde got a, forced another turnover, got out and ran. Clyde's done a nice job of going defense to offense tonight. You know, they get the turnover, they get a defensive board, and they're, uh, and they're gone down the other way. With that first free throw made, Jermaine, Gets in the double figures with 10. In that first uh, contest, Ruddy had 17 points and 14 boards. He would take that right now, yeah. wouldn't he? He's, uh, you know, not having one of his better games tonight, I think. And, uh, you know, he's playing with foul trouble. And, and Clyde's athletic, and they, they're, they're really bothering him. And they're all over Carrier, who hit the two threes early. There's a turnover, and the chin is missed. The out back iron missed, but he stayed there. And it kind of elapsed by Minders. They were celebrating the miss, yeah. Matt. That just shows, you know, Finio's athletic ability. He, he was a great quarterback for Clyde this year, and, uh, you know, he's probably about five foot ten. He just went down and tried to time off, dunk it off two feet. Wow. And uh, I was watching him in warm-ups. He's capable of doing that. Ruddy inside. Nobody draws the foul. They have got Turner inside. I think Bogan from behind was okay. There's Here comes other. that play. Really nice play by Doig there. You know, he, they missed it and he just got it back and noticed Fanil was still open underneath and threw it up to him. You have to be impressed with the way Clyde looks for the open man. Yeah, I think uh, they do a great job of uh, playing together as a team. Uh, their chemistry just seems better this year uh, than, than in, uh, maybe a little bit better than last year even. And, uh, you know, these guys all like playing together. They seem very uh, selfless. They don't really care who scores, and they, they do a great job of finding each other. And Ruddy, uh, his woes continue. He goes 0 for 2 at the line. He Tough missed, night. Yeah, he missed some free throws against Paul Mack, too. He usually is, you know, 80% free throw shooter. Turnover gives it back. 48 to 21, and so we're down to 36 seconds. Remaining in quarter number three. Dave Barnick along with Matt Verkey, our ace cameraman Jeremy Hunt, and our engineer, one James Sinecropi. Not sure he likes James. I've never heard anybody <laughs> call him anything but Jim. Well, I think we usually go with Jim. And they got a little Cal Felker in the game just gets uh, whistled for a personal for Clyde. Yeah, he's a physical player. If you watch him, he really uh, he really digs in. As we look at that Newark game I mentioned, and then it's uh, at Waterloo and at Midlakes and at Wayne. Wayne defeated them here in a bucket. 
I think that was Ruddy, or excuse me, Devin Verkey. And Devin will the line with a chance to complete the three-point play. Nice, nice little inbounds play. Really didn't do too much. Devin just kind of broke off the top there and uh, probably fell asleep a little bit there. Nice and finish by Devin, though. Trailing by 25 points. Left-hander, yes. And his older brother doing very good things at uh, Finger Lakes Community yeah, College. Dylan's having a great year up there, uh, both offensively and defensively. Gets a lot of steals. He's shooting about 45% from the three-point line right now. And he's uh, made great improvements this year. He's doing well. The bomb from outside. Off the glass! Oh, my! And that'll do it for quarter number three. 51 to 24. They've turned it into a lapper. We'll be back with the fourth quarter right after this replay and followed by our commercial timeout and bang. We hold on to the things that really matter. Welcome to Generations Bank. Hi, I'm Jody Torrio. If you're like me, you've got stuff lying around the house that you want to recycle, but you're just not sure how, like broken toasters, vacuum cleaners, or microwaves. At Seneca Meadows, we have a drop-off for those. Bring in anything with a cord, and we'll make sure it's recycled properly through our partnership with 2TRG. It's that easy. Well, the good news Reminders Academy, they had their most productive offensive quarter with 13 points. That's not a great amount, but compared to the eight and three they scored in the first two quarters. The bad news is uh, Bogans misses that shot from outside. As Clyde had 21 yeah. points, their highest output yeah. of the game. You know, Miners got a little bit of scoring going there, but you know, obviously you can't afford to give up 21 points when you're down 19 points starting the quarter. And that has resulted in a 20, they have 27 point lead and more than doubling the Blue Devils output. Ruddy battling, but uh, the good block out inside. Down court quickly, Bogans doesn't force it. Swing it on the perimeter, Doig out to Turner. Inside Sano, dish off Bogans. Pretty play. Another nice play by Cam there. And, you know, I think Cam probably could have scored a lap if he wanted to, but he flipped it to Jermaine. And Cam's got four or five assists tonight, you know, playing that uh, four spot and uh, playing a really well, really good floor game tonight. Great unselfish play. Berkey shot short. Two on two. Pretty lay in by DeSano. DeSano erupting here in the second half. I think we're going to see some of the bench get in here pretty quick. High arcing shot, doesn't get the roll. Ruddy's rebound, lay it up and in. I'd like to see Luke get a couple of hoops here. Just uh, to satisfy uh, what's been a, to soothe what's been a difficult night. Yeah. There's a three pointer to answer, however by Jared Fennell, his second of the night. And a throw away by the Blue Devils. And our first look tonight at uh, Ryan Major. Tim Jackson, satorially resplendent in the vest, the dark blue shirt and tie. Got Brett Anderson coming in for his brother Jason. Oh 
I'm really surprised Doig doesn't even really look at the basket too much. You know, he does a great job of setting everybody else up, though. And nearly getting the roll. Ruddy will bring it up court himself. Finds Verkey. Defense in the name of Bogans and DeSanto were there to get it into Ruddy for the land. Eight for Luke. Remembering to a year ago that outstanding contest between Minders and Newark from this location. I was kind of hoping for something similar to that tonight. And that passes out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got to keep his head up a little bit better there. And, uh, you know, you got two six four guys all over you. Uh, Miner's also got to come back and help him out a little bit. Well, Dave Barnick along with Matt Furkey tomorrow night. It'll be Special K, Kevin Korzineski, joining Harold Weber for the Lions. Lions invading this Arthur L. Baker Gymnasium. Hope Not sure you'll, if they're, you know, even going to be able to watch the game with as much talking as they both like to do. It could be tough. <laughs> but the, the good news with uh, the webcast, you can always just watch the picture if you need a little break here Until and there. Them out. <laughs> we wouldn't advise no. that, though. My mentor at one time, That's Harold right. Weber. That would be his, fir his first game of the year, I think, this year, doing the webcast. The webcast by the web dog. That's right. He's been doing it for a while, as have I. And you're right about Doig. He just quickly looks. They find Bogans. And Ruddy getting the numbers up there. A little nice rebound. Verkey, the bomb. Bang! They could use a few more of those. Dylan with uh, 10 points now. Devin. Devin, excuse me. Uh, two threes and two of the two point variety. We got a timeout on the court. And I wonder if Jim has any updates on uh, that Syracuse football game. I, think, I don't think he wanted to know the score. I think he DVR'd it, so he's trying not ah, to find out. So okay. I guess we won't ruin it for him. All right. right. I, other than that seven nothing early lead, I haven't heard anything. Well, you know, I squeeze for uh, Syracuse, but I'm not too uh, excited about teams becoming bow eligible with a six and six <laughs> record after giving up 50 points twice during the season. Yeah, but still, it, it, it's good in that you know that you get some extra weeks of practice in, and uh, you know, so everybody gets some more reps, and uh, you know, maybe helps with a little recruiting. Sure. Some money. I would prefer, I know the pinstripe ball where they were victorious a year ago. Uh, I would prefer, I think, this time of year a warm climate rather yeah. than that. And yeah. they are, uh, I think, in Houston for the Texas Bowl. Yeah. Right here, it's a 27 point deficit for Minders. And Fennel in no hurry. And they might have even said, let's run a little clock on these possessions unless you have something, unless you have something wide open. Nice move, won't go. Contact, no whistle. And Miners comes out of the pack with it. This is Ruddy. Ruddy gonna take it to the hole and lays it up and in. Nice job by Luke on that play. Yeah, nice take there and uh, aggressive move to the basket. And there's a shot by Doig, and he buries it. Yeah, he looks like he can make those. Uh, but, you know, he likes his role. He likes to be that leader, playing play the point guard position, set everybody else up. That was a long two. And the lead at 27 points. Well, very happy. Uh, I think my son was hoping for a little more competitive game as well, but very pleased that my son, by way of California, home for the holidays, could join me tonight for the contest. How long is he home for? He leaves uh, a week from tonight. Oh, so he's home for a while, huh? Section five talks back for an online discussion of tonight's game and all the teams of section five. Visit section5.talksback.com. 
And, and Minders took Ruddy out, which, you know, I think for Coach Ciotti, he's got to start thinking they got a game tomorrow night and start getting some of these, you know, some of the guys who played quite a few minutes tonight, get them on the bench and uh, let them rest up. It, you know, this game's obviously been out of hand, so get some of the guys on the bench some playing time and uh, rest up, the, you know, your starters. And here's the bomb. No, we'll try to give you the players in there. Bogans, this could have been the exclamation point, and then DeSano with a near dunk. And uh, Bogan settles for the assist. Very unselfish play between the yeah, both two those guys, standouts. Both those guys really, really been really unselfish tonight, and uh, you know setting each other up a lot. Really, both very skilled big guys. Brett Anderson in double trouble. Inside, oh, wide open, but too hard, and lots of contact there. Little WWE action. Seneca Metals is uh, responsible waste management for the next generation. See how they do it by watching their videos at SenecaMetals.com. And Cam DeSano and Joe Main Bogans and Jason Doy gets a nice round of applause and congratulations from their coach and teammates as uh, they're going to call it a night. Great effort by. Yeah, great, great effort by Clyde tonight. They uh, just really dominated this game from start to finish. Got off to a little bit of a slow start there, but once they started get going and got their bearings, uh, they really, really took it to Miners tonight. And you know, Miners got to bounce back from this loss. And I'm not sure there's a whole lot you can, a whole lot of positives to even take out of this game. But uh, you know, they got to come out and play a little bit, a little bit harder, with a little more heart. Um, you know, on your home floor, you're getting, you know, you allowed obviously Clyde's a very good team but uh, I don't think they're 30, 30 points better than Miners. Yep, exactly. Uh, one of those games, uh, I think one NFL coach last week said, we're not going to watch the film, we're going to burn it and move yep. on. Yep, and that's what, that's what uh, Coach Ciotti should do with this game because uh, Clyde really dominated from start to finish. Um, but, you know, I guess the good thing is they uh, not going to be too much longer until they get back out there, coming back tomorrow night. So. They can put this one behind them and start thinking about Lions tomorrow night. Senior Kirk Lancaster gets the roll, gets in the scoring column, coming off the bench moments earlier. We see handling the ball, Fletcher Reese. I wonder if his folks were a fan of the Chevy Chase movies, <laughs> Fletch. To the bend. He has the ball driving. Bounces it inside and out of bounds with two and a half to go. And now we're going to have Michael Turner, who's uh, only four points, but complimented the uh, rest of his teammates very well. Yeah, he does, like we talked about earlier, he does a lot of the dirty work down low. Um, great rebounder. And, uh, you know, he, he, he lets DeSano and Bogans roam around while he's down there battling the big guys. And uh, good jumper. So Felker will try to control things from the point. 64-34, 30 point lead. I gotta believe as satisfied as the crowd's gonna be for Clyde. In general, both Community's hoping for a little more intensity than they saw tonight. Yeah, uh, you know, it was a big crowd here, and uh, obviously the game, you know, Clyde played well, and Miners just had a bad night, and the game didn't really live up to what we thought it was going to be, but still nice to see these guys out here playing. That was Ru Ruari Orlando with the miss. We want to try to put a name on every player that's there. We got a collision, and there goes the Finger Lakes 1.com camera. Jim will come out and fix that. <laughs> Better the camera than the commentators, man. That's right. Don't worry about the equipment. So Orlando at the line, a chance to get in the scoring column. Shooting the one and one. Kind of interesting stat. Only one team foul the entire half, reminders? Yeah, apparently. 
And that, uh, you know, that kind of tells you something, too, that they're just not being real aggressive. You know, you're, you're down 30 points. You should be looking for steals, you know, looking to make something happen. And, uh, you know, they just, uh, they, tonight wasn't their night. Hopefully they can bounce back tomorrow night. Well, the only thing in doubt is the final score. And kind of losing uh, off-balance shot by Jordan Munson, who's in the contest for the Golden Eagles. I see Ryan Breen also out there. Orlando's shot, no, it's short. He wanted more. And there's the uh, practice in the low gym. Not much arc on that shot. We have um, Zach Bishop. Coffee, we mentioned him earlier. Bishop at the line. So 25 points in the second half thus far by Minders, but too little, too late. Yeah, still not enough, obviously. You know, we got 36 for the game. Um, you know, they, get, they should be up. They got to have to get up in the 60s to win these games. So Clyde Savannah will go to 9-0. They had the one-point victory on the road where they hung on at Lions. That should be a great rematch. Yeah, that, that, that game's going to be at Clyde Savannah where Lions won last year. So it's kind of setting up like it did last year. Although North Wales Wolcott in that league's undefeated too. So they, you know, they could play, you know, they could upset somebody. And uh, Red Creek almost beat Lions and Clyde. So oh, my a popular basket. The players on the Clyde bench off their, on their feet for Shaquan Haskins with a two point shot from the baseline. Those are the kids you know they don't get much playing time and obviously don't score very much. And uh, they're happy. The teammates and the fans are yep. happy when they do. That's a nice job, you know, by obviously the, the these guys are out does. there working every day. Yep. Nice move by Shaq. <laughs> the Shaq attack. Is his shoe size the same as the other Shaq's? I doubt it. I don't think so. We're down in the final seconds now. It's under 10. And the shot at half court won't go with a half a second left on the clock, 66-38. That should be the final score as uh, Clyde will simply inbound it. And yes, indeed, and that is it. Your final score, 66-38, all Clyde. Both teams ragged from the beginning, and we couldn't tell what was going to happen after one. We'll be back for the post-game show and final stats after this FingerLakes1.com timeout. We hold on to the things that really matter. Welcome to Generations Bank. At Seneca Meadows, landfill gas is used as fuel to generate electricity to power between 12,000 and 18,000 homes. And because this fuel is burned at high temperature, it doesn't go into the atmosphere. To learn more, watch our videos at SenecaMeadows.com.
Miners Academy. You see the score before you, the finished score, the final 66 to 38. Clyde Savannah, Golden Eagles all over the Blue Devils here. Not very nice uh, Christmas spirit for Clyde Savannah coming in to Seneca Falls. I have as uh, our special guest, one of tonight's standout performers, Cam DeSanto. Cam, first of all, congratulations and uh, a great performance by yourself and really discipline on selfish work by the entire team. Thank you. Uh, what can you tell me, the, 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 first score, the first quarter only 12-8, lots of turnovers both ways. Uh, it seemed to take a few minutes for your team to settle down. Did you do anything different? Did your coach say anything to you different to get things rolling? Yeah, and there is, thanks. speaking of coach Tim, Tim Jackson, great effort. Um, not nah, we just we knew it was going to be a different atmosphere just because we're away and it's a it's a bigger size school than we're usually playing and we just had to get the uh, the butterflies out if you want to call them that it just we just had a bunch of nerves and after a while we just calmed down and just started playing our game. Well, I remember when you you got your first bucket. It took you a few minutes few minutes of play before you recorded that field goal and then you really caught fire finishing with 18 but both you and Jomaine on several occasions could have scored yourselves but chose to find an even higher percentage shot by dishing off to one another uh, you seem to enjoy the passing to the open teammate you and Jomaine particularly have a great uh, chemistry between the two of you yeah we've been playing since uh the little leagues it, it's just it's we just know where each other are on the court now you had a pretty good lead in the first game to open the season but minders clawed back you won only by six at home you must have anticipated or did you not anticipate a 28 point victory here in minders tonight um i really didn't know how much we were going to win by to be honest we uh just came in with open minds and just played the best we could and the outcome would determine itself. You know, I've watched a lot of Clyde teams in Wayne County basketball over the years, including a standout uh, state championship team. And they've had a lot of talent, a lot of talented, a lot of victories, but your team is very disciplined defensively under coach Tim Jackson. Does he preach that a lot in practice? Every day. Uh, there's not one day where it's just offense. We do defense three quarters of the practice most days and then we'll just scrimmage or do whatever to get our offensive moving but very defensive practices a lot of defensive drills we run and it's yeah it's just mostly defense and where do you go from here uh, after this victory uh we go next saturday to North Rose will hit. That's what I thought, uh, memory serves correct, and uh, they're off to a good start this year, so yep. uh, not anticipating a picnic over there. Yeah, not really, trying to just keep an open mind again. Well, yeah, great effort, uh, I'm really uh, pleased for you, standout performance, congratulations. Thank you. Best of luck the rest of the year, and a happy new year to you and your Golden Eagle teammates. You too. That's Cam DeSano, who led all scores with 18 points by my count. And we'll give you all the scoring here. First, for the victorious Clyde Savannah Golden Eagles, DeSano with 18. Joe Fennell with 15. Jason Doig with a bucket, two points. Michael Turner, only, uh, he had eight points. Solid game, though. Um, very impressed with a lot of these players, he, he being one of them. Kirk Lancaster with two. Shaq Haskins with a bucket and two points. 13 for Jermaine Bogan and um, Jared Fennell. Two trifecta, six points. Total of 66 on the other side of the ledger. Carraher with two trifectas, I think both in the third quarter, as I recall, six points. Two points on the night for Orlando off the bench. 10 for Devin Verkey, uh, along with Luke Ruddy's 10, the leading scorer, uh, scorers for Minders. Uh, two points apiece for Cole Fletcher, Jason Anderson, and Brian Johnson, and Zach Bishop, and a point for Jared Coffey, a total of 38. And um, uh, Clyde gave uh, Minders a pretty good whipping here tonight. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to say it. Uh, you know, I think we're expecting a little closer game, and I think, uh, you know, Minders got a little overwhelmed there. They got down early, and uh, they're not a real good come-from-behind team. They, they couldn't really match up with Clyde and play man-to-man. 
And, uh, you know, and I thought Clyde just, I give a lot of credit to them. They played a great game tonight. Uh, I was talking to Coach Jackson after the game. Defensively, I just thought they looked like a whole new team from from a couple, you know, when we saw them in November. And, uh, you know, they did a nice job running some zone offense. And, uh, you know, they, they were able to knock down some three-pointers, which kind of loosened things up and got, got things going. And we talked about, and he talked about, that this team really just, they like each other. And they got good, good, uh, they, they get along well. They really look for each other. They don't care who scores. And uh, he said it's fun this year. And, uh, you know, they played like that tonight. Well, new game tomorrow night. Long season. Of course, the next two games, very difficult on the schedule for Minders. Uh, they are here at Lions tomorrow night. We'll have all the action for you. Join uh, Harold Weber and Kevin Korzaneski for that one. Jeremy Hunt, of course, on camera, and Jim Senecropi making everything work together. Final comments, Matt? Uh, hopefully Miners can bounce back tomorrow night. Should be another fun game. I hope to be in attendance here and watch. Uh, you know, I always like going. I follow Miners, and then I like to follow Lions, obviously, with my dad's connections there. And uh, I like watching Lions play with Coach Zach Young. So uh, hopefully uh, a little better game tomorrow night, and uh, should be a fun game. You're going to probably take a break from watching TV in front of the big screen tomorrow afternoon to watch it in person. Yes. Syracuse plays the 2 o'clock game yep. versus Nova. And tomorrow night, right here, Lions at Minders. So I uh, want to wish you, your family, and everybody out there a prosperous New Year coming up. Hope you had a great Christmas. The final score from Minders Academy, 66-38, Clyde Savannah, the victor. Speaking for Matt Verkey and Jeremy Hunt and Jim Sinecropi, I'm Dave Barnick saying good evening, everybody, and may the force be with you.